ready to go to begin with because that that conversation was great, man. People are just going to miss out on one of the greatest conversations we've ever had. Well, I wasn't going to tell them that's what it was. I was going to just set them up and make them think that we were having this profound, deep, philosophical discussion. You know what? I missed it. I am (laughs) sick of I am sick of bullshit gaming controversies. Oh, God. What now? Okay, so Final Fantasy VII Remake looks pretty badass, right? Yeah, absolutely. But gamers have found a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming specifically male gamers have found a reason to be upset, and I can give you, I'll give you one guess why. Uh, I really don't want it to be what the one guess popped up into my brain it Go was. for it, just say, say, your, say your thoughts. Cause Please it's tell me right. it's not Tifa's chest size. Yes, it is. Gamers are upset that they reduced her chest size. There's been oh a God. there's been a one translation where they said that like oh there's like a an ethics department at Square that wanted to make it smaller because she has an athletic build. But then some other translation said oh. no, that wasn't what happened. It was actually just them getting notes that they wanted to make sure that whatever she's wearing, it makes sense that you know they're not you know flopping around unrealistically and awful when she's fighting since she is you know an active person. So yeah. that's probably why they decided to you know. If they actually wanted to be active, they, you know, probably should make sure she's wearing appropriate clothing that keeps everything in place. You know, part of part of why, well, <sighs> when the when the, when she was first shown, most people online that I either do follow or have have seen in the past, I went. I, I'm terrible with subscriptions on YouTube. I really am. I don't have a lot on my on my uh, my personal account, but um, I'm that guy that types in people's names. I'm sorry. I'll subscribe someday. I promise. Um, most people were just blown away. She looks great. She looks awesome. Like I, I talked to my wife a couple days after after E3, or at least after uh, Square's E3, <laughs> Square Square Enix's E3, and. Um, I was like, I'm really, I'm really glad that I have not heard a lot of complaints about her chest size because it's, it looks a little bit reduced from Advent Children, but Advent Children and uh, her appearances in Kingdom Hearts were reduced from Final Fantasy VII. But I think part of what I, w- I would say, Final Fantasy VII, everything was blocky and everything was bigger than it would be. Uh, you know, even Cloud's hands are bigger than they would be. His right. hair is bigger than that. I mean, in, in and, the... and I thought part of it was it's bigger because they're trying to show that yes, she is a chesty female. What she still is, even in this new game, is you know. But yeah, anyone who thinks otherwise is ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> like, like, oh, of all the fucking bullshit to be pissed off about. <laughs> yeah, dudes. I mean, I look. J- Japan is notorious for endowing their anime girls with with large assets i'm trying to be politically correct here um and that does happen but if you're trying to i mean first off it's obvious that she's wearing some athletic equipment which is great does kind of compress things so you know if she was wearing some other clothing they would look bigger but if you're going to be out there fighting, ask any female with any breast size, literally from from the, the the smaller to the larger, ask any of them. If they're going to be active, they're going to want to wear something like a sports bra, something with a lot more uh, compression and hold holding power to keep them from bouncing around. So all the females from the smaller to the larger will look smaller wearing that type of clothing. Also... Worth noting, you know, I'm pretty sure they did reduce the size as well, which I think yeah, is for the best either way. It's Because also, at the end of the day, uh, there's a big difference between 2019 and 2000, or 1997, and that is that it's very clear to companies that women actually play video games. So I can understand the desire to tone that down a bit, you know? Yeah. And I mean, there was, <clears throat> when you look at all the artwork, like in the, in the uh, book that came with the game, and I still have a PS1 copy of the game. So the art book is very, uh, or the art in the book is very anime-like. And like I just said, yes, J- Japan still does endow a lot of their anime female characters, regardless of age, with large breasts. And that's a Japanese thing. This is a Japanese game. It's a Japanese RPG. But yes, you're right. 2019 
for a wide audience. Thankfully, Square Enix is is thinking, well, let's 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 be a little bit more realistic on multiple fronts. Let's be realistic about what it would look, what type of clothing would she wear if she was fighting? Well, she'd use supportive and compressing clothing to keep them from moving around so much and hurting her. And then also, would you know? Does she? Do, do we really need to sexualize the character that much? You know, and I I don't know. I'm with you. I, I'm with. The, I mean, she's still I, wearing like, like a, a, I, a bare midriff type outfit, so it's not like she's not showing anything. Like it's not like yeah. they went. It's not like they went completely away from what the character looked like. Yeah, it's not like she's wearing her advent uh, advent children outfit or her Kingdom Hearts outfit where she's you know got nothing but arm skin showing. It, not that and, there'd and be anything not, wrong with that, though. To not be that clear, there would be anything wrong with that. But I'm glad they kept her outfit looking fairly original and i'm glad she i think she looks great it's like an updated no version of, of what we saw back in 97 with that thing except yeah. it makes, and like said, except it makes more sense part of the part of the 97 look of the actual in-game character is you need it's just like mario mario was not originally intended to be fat but in order to get the pixels detailed enough mario became pudgy Right, literally, that's the story behind Mario. So it is a similar situation with this. Uh, I don't know about those that. Characters if, to if you look at the FMVs, it's very clear that she's she's chesty. But if, they're you, bouncing if you're gonna around. if you're gonna have one model be be bigger, then they should all kind of be bigger, I guess. Maybe I'm just, I'm trying to justify. I wouldn't it. justify. Yeah, it. I, didn't I think, think it's I think it's very. I didn't think about those. Those were true. And but then that goes to the anime thing because the FMVs yeah. and the art, artwork definitely lend themselves towards an anime feel. I and think I think it's the, the reality is I think the reality is the 1997 it was created by a bunch of dudes and dudes like big breasts on women and they put them in there and I, they knew who they were appealing to. I I don't think it's as any simpler than that or I don't think it's any more complicated than that. I think it's what it was. But now we live in a different age where it's like, hey, games are for more than just dudes. Nothing wrong with dialing it back a bit. No, I uh, like I said it it made it made anatomical and story and realism sense for for all of it. Not that there's not girls with large breasts that fight, but even if they do fight, they're going to wear compressive clothing, which will yep. make them look smaller. So I can't believe guys, we've, had, we've had like an eight minute conversation. I mean, seriously, come on now. No, that that look. You know me. I am I am far from a politically correct. Person. Are you are you are you going to introduce the show? I wonder. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Breast Talk with <laughs> No. <laughs> Welcome to LR Mornings with Kyle and Jammer. I am Kyle. I am Jammer, and I'm sorry and about to intro. I am just blown away because I re- I really thought that we we had gotten past this moment like no i know like i didn't hear any complaints about it <laughs> well, i just, remember you're clearly telling my wife i'm happy there's no complaints about it yeah well too bad too bad you should have known better <sighs> it is what I, it is it, like the like thing is at the end of the day like game a lot of gamers they're a very specific type of people and that's just that's the way it is you know yeah and like i said you, you know me i'm i'm far from the politically correct type person um, so for me to be upset at you guys being, uh, not you guys, the audience, cause LRM audience is definitely much better than this, but for those people out there that are online, you know, bitching about it, we still want you as readers. Um, I just, I st- stop. There's, there's way worse things in this world, even in the world of entertainment going on than Tifa wearing compressive clothing and, and maybe having had a slight reduction. I mean, definitely had a sli- I definitely had a reduction. Yeah, like, I don't think there's a question there. I think it's just a matter of whether or not it's important to you. And if it is, sorry, that's important to you, but it shouldn't be. It should not yeah, be important sure to enough. you. All I all I did was type in Tifa Final FF Seven Remake. Uh, Tifa isn't getting a smaller chest, just a proper bra. She's a, Tifa's chest shrunk by ethics department. Tifa's boobs didn't actually shrink. Tifa's boobs shrunk. I, it's just, going back and forth like i think yeah it's it's all over the place i, I mean, mean holy shit and this is these are all recent rel- relatively recent over the last five days yeah like it's i think people yeah stuff that's happening you know gamers they find a reason to complain they and no matter what they will find a reason to complain they're very very um not what well, needy isn't the word difficult to please 
They they yeah. want what they want, and if they don't get it, they're going to complain about it. And they are very much are attached to specific things in regards to their entertainment. Anyways, mm. that shouldn't be the case with this. This is that's just it. It <sighs> basically is just yeah. I don't know. I mean, I do know, but I'm not going to say anything. I don't know. You know what? I I. Uh... It just goes to show how many guys out there don't really think of women as people straight up they just don't well i mean it's it's a video game person and sure. a video game person's completely different than an actual person i mean you got people whose whose take on entertainment characters carries over into the real world which is inappropriate but i feel like I a mean, lot of the guys who are complaining about this types of things are the kind of guys where that would happen maybe we don't know them that's true we don't know them i'm, I'm assuming admittedly it's a bias of mine but I'm assuming. Anyway, so, let's move on yeah. from that. Anyway, yeah. How's your weekend go? It's infuriating. Uh, it was a weekend, you know. Did some stuff for the site. Got some nice little interactions with people on a on a couple of uh, articles over at lrmonline.com. So if you don't know, we do post brand new stories on the weekends. Thanks to yours truly. Yeah. I, I volunteered for it. Thank you. I love it. Yours truly or <laughs> and it's, mine truly. And it's so I like I like some of my uh, uh, some of the conversations I have on weekends with people because I was I was that guy that would come by the website before you know I started working here and and be like why aren't you guys covering this and and now we cover it so <laughs> yeah you're helping fill that void <laughs> oh man yeah there's a couple of uh, Twitter people that follow me and and we interact on stories that go up all week long of course but also on the weekend so. Um, one of the one of the interesting ones was uh, getting back to Venom and Spider Man. Uh, don't sing, stop it. I I'm not, not going to do it. I was that. humming it in my head, so uh. I'm glad you stopped me. I was about to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Amy Pascal kind of uh, added to the will they, won't they? Uh, in a in a recent interview with Screen Rant, uh, they they asked her about uh, they specifically asked her about Morbius, Craven, and Venom, and Spider-Man and these characters mixing together and she said this the most important thing is that each of these movies can stand on their own so I think the first thing for us to think about is Venom has to stand on its own Far From Home has to stand on its own Spider-Verse has to stand on its own they all have to be great movies themselves and then the possibilities are endless that's a whole lot of nothing yeah, exactly but it's it's also that that final phrase of and then the possibilities are endless. Of course, Look, they're we, endless. Come just, on, just like we we me and you discussed before, Venom's not coming to the MCU. People, that's not happening. Okay. I I don't to see be clear. A we don't see it happening. It might we happen, don't see, but yeah, we don't see it we, happening. We don't see, and we don't. Feige's comments don't seem to lend towards that happening. Everything kind of points to Sony doing one of those three things that I talked about. Taking Tom Holland home and just completely bringing Tom Holland over to Sony and that's it. Sharing Spider-Man with Marvel and, you know, sharing the MCU uh, Spidey with Marvel and Sony. Or Sony just saying, hey, we've got our own Spider-Man now in our in our universe. All three of them are real possibilities and uh, more likely than Venom coming over to the MCU. But... The one thing she didn't mention later on in the uh, thing, or the thing she mentioned later on in the article was she's not part of Morbius at all. She's not even like an, an EP on it. She has no involvement with Morbius. I wonder why. Because she's involved with Venom, Spider-Verse, Spider-Man over at MCU. Morbius is a Spider-Man villain. He's connected... Morbius is is apparently connected to the Sony universe of Marvel characters. Why is she not a part of that? I mean, I think you might be looking too deep into it. There might be a variety of reasons. Maybe she doesn't have time because she's working on the Sony stuff or the other Spider-Man stuff. Maybe it's just yeah, but it's even a whole EPs different get branch. Their names slapped on anything and everything they possibly can. I mean, I think unless you you understand the specifics of how she's connected or how she isn't, I, I think it might be irresponsible to sort of speculate any other reason apart from. Well, I wasn't speculating. I'm. I say. I like. I have no idea. I. I wasn't no. like. Oh, she's not. A, she's not part of it because it's bad or anything. I'm literally just like, why isn't she a part of it? Well, I, let's take I a look no at Morbius. Let's see here. Morbius, Living Vampire, uh, movie. Are they gonna actually call it the Living Vampire? I hope so. 
I don't know. Good question. Um, let's see here. Film, film, film. 2000, blah, blah, blah. In November 2017, Sony Pictures announced to make a film adaptation. Films were written by these people. It was announced that Jerry Little will star. Production was begun, blah, blah. Venom producer. Avi Arad confirmed filming will begin. It will be featured by blah, blah, blah. It is blah, blah. Yeah, no idea. No idea. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Yeah, it was maybe just a curiosity. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, my she assumption could be would just be. busy. I mean, she could be busy, but it also could just be a situation where she, maybe her contract is she's only related to characters directly connected to Spider Man or something. Was she even <sighs> a part of Venom? Yeah, she's Venom and she's on for Venom 2. Well, that would make sense. So, yeah, maybe it has to do with the connection to Spider Man for <laughs> all I know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Speaking of Spider Man, that movie hits next week. And yeah, it does. And it got a lot of TV spots out. A lot of like a lot of story coming out. And I don't know if I'm just um spoiled by the by the Russo brothers and just have like memory blocks around other Mar but I don't remember so much Marvel stuff coming out of the trailers and the TV spots as I do Spider Man Homecoming and Far From Home. Do you? Yeah. Like like, I mean, it depends I, on the movie. Um, did they did were very... Doctor Strange give away the farm? I mean, I, I don't remember that. Um, well, I mean, Doctor Strange was a bit different. That was like a brand new Scratch character. This is one with all sorts of connections to the previous movies. And it's just... Uh, that's just kind of the way it is. Like It has connections to the previous movies. So it's different, you know? But also, of course, I bet you there is more for this one. Like, I don't think they gave away as much... But I don't think yeah. it was that much of a drastic difference. But yeah, it's Sony. You know, Sony is is not necessarily as confident as Marvel Studios. And they're probably handling the marketing. And a lot of it probably has to do with them wanting to make sure people get their butts in seats. And they go like, like see, it's connected. They, it's connected. Do they not think that? I mean, shit, you're putting Mysterio in it. And, and Homecoming, Homecoming I'll, I'll admit this, Homecoming did less money domestically than I thought it would. But it still did really well worldwide. I mean, it did better it's, than most than the other movies did. I think it it did. But I, you know, me, I thought it was like this absolutely the best you know Spider Man live action film there was. Um, Agreed. Because Spider Verse definitely gives it a run for its money as a best Spider Man movie. But Spider Verse is a little different. It gets to be different. But anyways, um. I I really I did I thought Homecoming would do I mean it made three hundred and thirty four million uh, domestic and eight hundred and eighty million worldwide I really expected it to push four hundred million uh, domestically just because of how good it is people are gonna go see this movie you didn't have to tell us that fucking MJ figures it out you didn't have to fucking sh- <laughs> you know and, and they keep hammering that part home with the latest TV spot where they're in the hotel room and Ned comes in and they they make a little joke about hell ned's ned's known longer and i mean just we're, we're gonna see this movie sony have some faith in your i know you guys really fucked up with a with a few spider-man movies but have some faith in kevin feige and company you know what they didn't fuck up with this one venom what did they fuck up with <laughs> shut up <laughs> you know i almost watched it this weekend after writing writing up the story it's like man i Maybe I should really see this movie. I think you should watch uh, it. I'm just I just so did. that you can complain about it, you know, willingly or not willingly with, with, with I information. I know, but but what if I what if I find stuff not to complain about? Well, then that's what what's the problem with that? What would be and the what would be the downside of you I liking lose some it? Some of my hatred, and you know, I subsist on hatred. <laughs> that is that is your old school <laughs> fanboy mentality that you have to shake off now as as a journalist of this of the. Uh, of the entertainment arts, you know? Hey, I, I did go through and watch all of the DCEU, which is something I said that I had absolutely no interest in doing for well, That's the good, that's good. So I mean, I seeing Venom, that. it's literally just like an, like two hours of your time. I say go for it. Oh, God. Can anyway. Get drunk first? <laughs> no, no. You have to be conscious so that you can actually be intelligent about it. Be drunk. You can be drunk the second time if you want. <laughs> Because I know you're going to want to watch it again. You're going to love it so much, you're going to want to watch it again. Uh, no. I, I don't. I, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So I do want to talk about one thing. Um, but before that? we do that, you know, Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, their episode, they're going to be talking about yes. Toy Story 4. The, the wonderful 
Toy Story 4. In-depth reviews. In-depth discussion reviews. But um, I want to talk a bit about... I just want to say some quick thoughts, because I can't not say stuff about it, because the movie was so fucking good. I'm sorry. The movie was amazing. Um, I will say this. I loved it. I cried. Uh, I was definitely teary-eyed, and on multiple occasions, but even crazier like basically what this movie like at the end of the third one i was like they ended it perfectly why make another one in retrospect this is a much better ending in my opinion and it was kind of like what we had an interview with the director i believe one of the directors of wreck it ralph and and ralph breaks the internet and he said uh for wreck it ralph it was a great ending but then you kind of look at it and you're like that's kind of fucked up actually and the ending in the first one was he was just like hey if this if this kid likes me i might not be that bad where he basically invested his whole entire uh personal existence, existence on the the thoughts of an external person and the second one was him about it was about him actually learning to love himself so that's kind of how I equate three and four for toy story three and four where it's like yes toy story three had the perfect ending until you kind of rethink the overall the implications of the overall ending and realize, huh, well, maybe it wasn't as as perfect of a cap off as we thought originally. And this one really delves deeper into the, what I think is is the better ending of the franchise. So can there so, be another one? I don't know. But I think this was a much better ending for the entire franchise. So I actually wrote on this this week and I haven't seen the movie yet. I can't get my son to sit through the first one and... I'm not going to pay a babysitter to go watch Toy Story 4 myself when I really didn't, you know. After the first one, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, they're all right. Uh, Did you but not I really see the enjoyed other ones? The first one. Was that? I saw them. I just, okay. it's, you know, I'm not a big Toy Story guy. I, I enjoyed them. They're not, I don't hate Toy Story. They just, like, I saw the first one. It's really special because of what it started. But there's other Pixar films I would prefer to see. But I would love for my son to get into these things, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel bad that the only thing he watches is Amazing World of Gumball and Teen Titans Go. (laughs) Yeah, he's a kid. If he likes it, he he likes He watches a lot of stuff, but yeah. yeah. Um, The the director, uh, I believe it was, said yes, that Toy Story 3 was the perfect ending to Andy and Woody's story, but that he felt that Woody had more story to tell is yes. th- that makes sense going into this movie. Yes. Yes. Okay. At 100%. Yes. And, and the producer had this to say, uh, they were asked, well, w- uh, will there be more by the moderator of a, of a press conference that LRM online.com attended? Um, the producer was asked about, will will there be more? And he was like, we've, we've closed the chapter on, on Woody. Do you feel Woody's chapters closed? Absolutely. Okay, so I said this, I said in the piece, I don't know if we'll ever see Toy Story 5, but Bo Peep, a Toy Story, is a real possibility. Wait, you, you said that? True? No, I said that. Uh, no. You don't think they're going to, not Bo Peep herself, but that type of future Toy Story no. stuff. You don't think they'll do spinoffs? No. Okay. I don't cool. want. So I don't. I don't want to delve into it. Pretty much. Uh, no. I don't want to. Spe- I don't want to spoil okay. anything. But no. I just was really proud of my Bo Peep a Toy Story bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, unfortunately that's that's very uh not true, <laughs> considering well, how things well, end. No, no, I, I not Bo Peep herself. Just that <clears throat> no. Whole, I, I just a don't. Toy Story. I don't think so. It. I wish I could talk spoilers, but uh, I can't no, really. I can't really delve into BGR, the why. The P. Yeah, check them out. So. They're coming out later today. Probably in the yes. next hour and a half or so, so don't miss that. It might already be live on SoundCloud. No, it's not. No? No. Oh, okay. Well, um, what, a, what a morning. <laughs> that movie underwhelmed. As far What's as... That? that movie underwhelmed financially at the box financially office. Financially it did, yes. Yeah. $118 million projected uh, after originally Disney, and Disney will lowball some of their stuff so they could be like, oh, wow, look, our expectations were exceeded. Uh, Disney said 140 ish uh, mm-hmm. Box office mojo had predicted like 160, 165-ish. Pulled in at $118 million. Yeah. Le- leaning further into this post-in-game slump i mean the i box mean office all right is... to be fair it underwhelmed compared to those projections but it yes. still was a series best and yep. is still on track to do <coughs> you know really oh, well, well overall it's probably gonna break really a, well is, is it gonna break a billion let me see here yeah probably gonna break a billion when all said and done 
It's uh, 200 some odd opening weekend, so that's not too shabby at all. Worldwide. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like 260 something worldwide. I think as of right now. So yeah, 238. 238. Okay, my bad. 238. Box office mojo. Yeah. So yeah, it it's still. I don't. I wouldn't call this a slump, but you know, I think we they were expecting more. Uh, this is definitely going to be a huge success for them, especially since everyone is is glowing about this movie and talking yeah. about how great it is. And I'm yeah, adding the... I'm adding to that mix because I thought it was fucking fantastic. Like I was yeah. emotionally distraught after this movie for a while, just going like, oh my god. Oh god. What's going on? Like, who are we? Why are we? And it has, in my opinion, the best villain of the franchise so far. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, and, well, and Gabby, maybe I Gabby. I can get my son to watch the others so we can all go see it. But we got our tickets for Spider Man next week. That's what. That's what I do know. Yes. A.M. So Spider Man. Is that is that an opening week? Because it's coming out on a fucking Tuesday. Is it next Tuesday? Uh, yeah, yeah. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Is that an opening day movie? Well, opening night movie for you? Uh, it'll depend on the schedule. I mean, it's definitely opening weekend. Um, it just depends on the schedule that we have going on here. Maybe because I go to bed pretty fucking early. So <laughs> anything that 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 pushes me past my my ten to ten thirty bedtime is like questionable. But if I can get in before that, probably yeah. What what are you gonna be like when you actually are old? Like, what are you gonna be like when, you're, when you're seventy years old? That's a like, good question. In bed by four? <laughs> I no way, because then I'd be up by eight p.m. and then I'd be like <laughs> up all night. No, but uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, who know? I've always been old-ish, except I've actually it's only in the past five years or so that I've actually been kind of a, a morning person. Uh, but I like getting up early in the morning because I I get to be so productive. You know, I get to be really yeah. productive doing all kinds of stuff beforehand and. I don't know. I just like pop, Always wish popping that out of bed. We could figure out how to put sleep in a in a pill, not pills that help you get to sleep, but the actual benefits of sleep in a pill form, and that it would be okay to uh, safely take this for up to three days in a row to go without actual sleep. Just think of how much more shit you could get with seventy two uninterrupted hours. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome, but you know, and you can do that like sleep is once fucked or twice up. a month safely. Sleep, sleep is fucked up because it's <laughs> think about it this way: it's not only do you have to, not only because I, I know someone said, "Oh, you just have to lay still for eight hours and stuff," and I'm like, "Well, you can't just lay still. You have to have something no. blocking your eyeballs. Like you yep. have to have something blocking your eyeballs, and being well, you don't have to lay still necessarily, but basically you have to black out. You have to put something in front of your eyes so that you lose consciousness. That's weird." Yeah. That's really weird. And then your body releases a chemical that paralyzes yourself so that way when you are dreaming, you don't act out your dreams and hurt yourself or somebody else. Yeah. I've and that's why sleep, sleep paralysis. paralysis is such a fucking creepy fucking thing. Oh I've, my God. Have you ever I, had that? Dude, I've had that more times than I can count. I, there was definitely a time where I would probably get sleep paralysis at least once every couple of weeks. Um, but I learned to get out of it. It's actually not that creepy once you get it, once you figure it out. Like I probably had it, it, I could probably, I think I probably had it well over like 60 times. Have you ever had the weird creatures that come yeah. with it? I've had, yeah, I've had someone, something come and just like crawl into the room and just sit on my chest. And then, uh, <clears throat> things looking at you. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's creepy if you've had, never had it before. But if you've, you're used to it, you're just like, oh, sleep paralysis. Okay. And then you kind of got to figure out how to, to break yourself out of it, which I had done over time. So it's nice. Yeah. I, I do the rocking thing, right? I'm, <clears throat> I'm slowly trying to rock rock myself out of it. That's I, uh, that's I, I close my eyes again and then just sort of like try to jerk myself awake. And that works about 95 to 98% mm. of the time. Yeah. Okay. Well, very cool. Well, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. I, we're, in we're into our sixth week with LR Morning, so uh, you guys have been keeping the show going strong. We really, really appreciate it. Leave some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see us uh, do more on the show. And uh, definitely make sure you're checking out lrmonline.com every single day for all your entertainment news needs. We got it. We got it all. YouTube channel, always there. Lots of great things. Lots of celebrity interviews. New things come into it. LR Mornings is on there. And definitely check out anywhere you get podcasts just about. You're going to find the Los Fanboys podcast channel and all the great shows, including uh, Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, Toy Story Reviews Today, people. Go check that out. LR Mornings, LRM Ranks It, and of course, Los Fanboys itself. And we've got some other podcasts on the website. Check those out. And yeah. 
Thanks. Jammer, where can people find you at? You can find me on Twitter at JamTheWriter, and of course all my writings at LRM Online. And you can also find him at 1232 West Beach Street. No, I'm to... <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? Where are you going with this? You guys can find me at that Kyle Malone on Twitter, as well as doing stuff for the website all over the place because I'm a crazy person. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk oh, to you tomorrow. Oh, 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 we're on Spotify right now. Oh, we got on Spotify. Yeah, so if you type in Los Fanboys on Spotify, Yay! we're on Spotify. So thank, big thank you to Brandon. Uh, Brandon Jones, our lovely BGR the P host, as well as occasional co-host of Los Fanboys. So thank you, Brandon. Yay. Okay, now we can go. Bye. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.